thank you so much for your time with us today. No problem, my pleasure. Um, could you introduce yourself for us? Yeah, so um, my name is Kyle Shields. I'm an uh, assistant professor here in the physics and uh, astronomy department. And uh, I started this position last July. And um, uh, I can go back to my story, but uh, my field is uh, subatomic and uh, nuclear theory. So I do calculations for experiments in subatomic and nuclear physics. I live right here in Winnipeg and uh, married, three children, and um, yeah, I'm living my dream, basically. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about your research. Okay, so my research, yeah. So as I said, um, I'm, a, I'm a theorist, so I do uh, calculations. Um, particularly, I'm interested right now in uh, what's called hadronic structure. So we think about the nucleus of the atom made up of protons and neutrons. We're trying to look inside the protons and neutrons and understand their structure because we know they have a very rich structure of more things. So um, that's what my focus is on right now. That's, that's interesting and fascinating. Yeah. Um, what do you like most about your research? Um, it's definitely um, uh, a good intellectual challenge. Um, I kind of fell in love in physics many years ago and been doing it for, uh, let's see, I started in my undergrad here in 2005. So since then I've been studying physics pretty uh, intensively. And um, I like that it's a uh, it's, um, it's a rich theory about nature. It's, uh, of course, we're just mere mortals, so um, we, uh, we model things and we try and explain things the best we can, and then it's um, testing the model and uh, putting it through its, through its uh, trenches and understanding what works, what doesn't, and refine it over time. And, uh, uh, I like doing math. <laughs> That's a big part of it, for sure. Um, in fact, when I started, I wasn't sure when I started University One, but I wanted to be a mathematician or a physicist. Uh, but I'd say by the end of my second year, uh, things converged to physics pretty physics quickly. Physics One. Yeah. Physics One. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a challenge. Um, I want to know your story. And you said you could go back and just, I want to know your story in university and in science. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I grew up uh, in rural Manitoba, uh, in the prairies here. Um, and uh, and uh, one of our agricultural community called Starbuck, and uh, we uh, we kind of lived in that area in the southwest uh, prairies. And um, by the time I finished high school, I came straight here, Uni Uni Manitoba, and I uh, was pretty strong in the math and sciences, so I knew it was something along those lines. So I actually started off in engineering. And I decided I liked my physics and math courses. And so then I went into the Faculty of Science and started a physics degree. And um, when I finished that physics degree, um, I had a crossroads, you know, do I stay in academia or I do get in some other profession? So I had actually chosen education. I decided I would try to uh, be a high school teacher. I could teach what I love. So I did the two-year program, uh, B.Ed. program here at U of M. And at the end of that, I taught for a while in my local school division, uh, still in rural Manitoba. And uh, something was missing. I, w I started missing physics. And I, I decided that another crossroads in my life to come back. I started a master's program here uh, with one of the professors that I knew that mentored me through my undergrad. He took me on as his grad student, and then um, I just kept going. So I finished uh, my PhD here um, as a subatomic theorist um, in 2020. And then um, I had a tough decision. I was looking for work. Um, there was not a huge demand for nuclear physicists and in Manitoba. So I did find a postdoc position in the States, uh, in DC. Um, and that was about two years uh, throughout the pandemic, which was interesting. Um, <clears throat> I decided to leave. At this point, I had 
uh, two children, my wife, who were married for a while, and I decided to keep them here in Winnipeg uh, while I did that during the pandemic. So that was tough, um, but I learned a lot and I got some experience. And then, um, to my surprise, in the fall of 2019, there was a job posting here for an Indigenous Scholars. And I qualified and I applied with, with my fingers crossed. And I uh, went through the whole interview process and um, I got the offer early 2020. And I took it. I think my wife was more excited than I was, if that's <laughs> even possible. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I took the job and um, they let me get a little more experience out there and I came and I started uh, uh, last summer. Well, that's a very interesting journey. So here we are, yeah. <laughs> It looks like University of Manitoba and physics won every time. Yes, University of Manitoba <laughs> has just been kept sucking me back in and uh, they can't get rid of me, I guess. Oh, we're lucky to have you here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I'm, and you mentioned that briefly. So, and I'm uh, also an immigrant here in Canada. Um, this is also National Indigenous History Month. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I always wondered was that as a non-Indigenous member of this community. How can I both learn and raise awareness about Indigenous science? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm still trying to shape my role as an Indigenous scholar. I'm still trying to understand what we mean when we say Indigenous science, um, because um, you know, I went through the whole education system being taught, you know, rudimentary physics, um, which is um, basically, you know, mostly Eurocentric, the Western sort of um, um, discipline. And uh, <clears throat> only in, in a few years ago that I started, um, you know, exploring um, different ways of thinking about science. And um, Unfortunately, a lot of the traditional knowledge is, um, it's not that accessible and you have to really go out of your way and, and connect with communities, connect with the elders and uh, ask lots of questions. So for me, um, it's just trying to get involved with some of the, uh, I'm really impressed with the University of Manitoba. They have a lot of um, events and things going on with indigenous. Um, anything really you can go to powwows you can go to to meet other aboriginal students i've been trying to lure in aboriginal students in my research program um, i think we we'll just be involved with the university community acknowledge that we have an indigenous community and just try and get involved and connect with the people that are part of it and um, that would be my generic, generic, somewhat generic advice, but uh, I'm still learning myself. Um, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, in my family, um, unfortunately, residential schools sort of, there's not a lot of Aboriginal traditions in my family. Uh, my mother um, has begun connecting with the community and she's learning Indigenous ways. And I've been so busy, um, unfortunately, with my face and a text, physics textbook for so many years. It's only now that I start to wake up and be a part of it. So, um, but I'm enjoying it and it's, it's great to uh, finally uh, be a part of that. So I hope I can, hope I can be a meaningful uh, member of the community. Absolutely. Here. Thank you so much for sharing that yeah. with us. Thank you so much for your time today. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Wish you luck on every other step of the way. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.